Well, thank you, Mark, for that wonderful introduction. I'm really, truly delighted and honored to be here, um, to be addressing um, you people who are spending a, a good portion of your life learning about movement and its changes. Um, I had an inkling that I would like Feldman Christ, and I've done a little bit of reading, not very much, and Mark has sent me some tapes and I spent a couple of hours with Mark yesterday and uh, came away thinking, why am I telling you people anything? Um, because I was totally awed by the amazing, sophisticated knowledge that this system, and especially my conversations with Mark, um, I think the science may seem rather crude um, compared uh, to the kind of intuitive, hands-on, brain-into-knowledge that you people have and are gaining all the time with your experience. So I'm actually sort of thinking, I am not sure I can tell you anything that you don't already know at some very deep level. Um, but. I will, in fact, go through some of the kinds of things that we've been working on and thinking about for the last, oh, almost 20 years now. Um, but I want this to be a dialogue because I feel I've come here to as much learn from you um, as to tell you uh, things about what I do. Um, it, it's a very exciting time when we can see, and just in our brief conversation, there are lots of places where the science is converging um, and it's very uh, harmonious with what you people are, are doing. Um, the science is changing. We're all aware now that the kinds of approaches people have had in the last uh, 25 or 30 years um, are dissolving and that there's a real synthesis between the neuroscience um, the people looking at development, um, people looking at movement. Um, it's changing a lot, and there are lots of places where it's coming together. People who are looking at memory, who are um, looking at perception, and so on. Um, it, it's beginning to gel. It's a tremendously exciting time. There's, uh, I think, uh, this is such a wonderful way to. Uh, to analyze, to describe um, what we do, and um, there's you know, a few things. I, mean, I think it, uh, Professor Thalen describes these things so well. That it probably doesn't need uh, emphasizing, but it's like sometimes like the idea of you know bumping the system, or the idea of there's a, a very deep attractor, and the idea that it takes a lot of force. I mean, to move it to another place. Is, those are obviously uh, uh, metaphors, bumping and forcing. And that, in fact, <clears throat> it could be extreme gentleness, which could move uh, one from one kind of <clears throat> phase state or one, one kind of attractor into another state. It could be gentleness. It could be a very small thing, or like the examples that she, that she gave. And, and in our work, we're oftentimes uh, doing things that are very, very delicate that can produce very uh, big changes. And also, I guess, the, it's, it's an interesting thing from, uh, there's almost, is it an opposite question in our work to maybe the, que the, the theoretical or research question that, that in, in, in the research you're saying, you're saying there are certain changes that are observable, and then you're trying to identify what are the control parameters that bring about those kinds of changes. And in our work, we're often seeing people where maybe there's no changes happening at all. And we, too, are trying to determine what are the control parameters that could be responsible for change, but we have to find them out in the interaction uh, with, uh, with the person. And, uh, and that the assumptions, I mean, that there's a, a certain kind of faith, we, a belief that we have in the plasticity of the nervous system and a belief in the, uh, the complexity of the system, the ability of the person to change, that somehow if we sufficiently or in some way, intelligent way, provide support, alter the environment, alter what we ask of the person, uh, that if we present 
something in the right way, that's going to be sufficient to destabilize the existing pattern and bring about the, the possibility of change. And so uh, in our work, we need to develop a large repertoire and the creativity to be able to find out, to discover what are, what are going to be those ways of doing things. <laughs>